And we also have uh, some breaking news from a U.S. defense official confirming uh, to Fox News today the word Russia has successfully completed its fifth test fire of an anti-satellite missile. It's capable of knocking out strategic U.S. communications and navigation satellites. The test reportedly carried out December 16th from a base in central Russia. So it raises the question about uh, military personnel and civilians and what we might do, say, if we didn't have satellite communications networks. To that point, there is one company that's doing a lot on it, has a plan that is aimed at kind of disrupting this whole complex, this whole wireless and, and satellite uh, complex. The company is called Airborne Wireless Network. And what it's looking to do, it's looking to turn the average commercial jetliner planes into satellites operating in the sky. So with that, we have a Fox Business exclusive interview with Airborne's Vice President of Technical Development, Marius uh, DeMoss. Marius, thank you very much for joining us. Now, I gave kind of a long introduction to you longer maybe than I would with another guest, but I want you to t pick up on that and explain this technology to us. In simple terms, what does your company do? Okay, well, good afternoon. Uh, what our company does is we are creating, or we intend to create, a network between satellites and the uh, underwater cable and the ground connectivity. Uh, we intend to use aircraft as our repeaters, and today there are 27,000 aircraft flying, which all could be our repeaters. And by the time we roll out the system, we're looking at uh, probably 30,000 or more satellites, which you know land and can be updated any time uh, the aircraft is uh, on the ground. Huh. So a lot of people think about it, and I think you may have been involved in this personally, correct me if I'm wrong, how we use the Internet and or our cell phone while we're on a plane. But I don't know that anyone has thought about how we make the plane uh, better use our cell phone while we're on the ground. I mean, how did this all come about? I'm sure there's a, a lengthy process for getting approval and the like, right? Uh, yes, we, uh, we're in the process now of getting approval from the FAA. Um, we are doing a uh, three aircraft test. It's actually two 757-200s uh, that we have sitting in uh, Roswell in New Mexico. We are going to be flying those to uh, Kansas City. We also have what is our, our third aircraft, which is a van, which can become part of the network either as a, um, yeah, a, a kind of like an aircraft or a ground station. Uh, so we have a, a MASH network that we will be testing here uh, end, of third, uh, end of the first quarter of 2017. So for this to actually work, so as you're saying you're testing it, I believe you said with three airplanes, and obviously you want to see if it works, how it comes about. For this to actually have a profound impact, say I'm in the middle of the country somewhere where there are not a lot of cell towers getting up to the satellites, my phone isn't working well, how many planes would have to be connected and how long might something like that take? Uh, we're, we're intending a rollout in about a year after that uh, test, the uh, uh, certification test. And once, the, once we roll out, we expect to have about uh, a third or so of the U.S. aircraft. Uh, at the moment, there are 5,500 uh, 5, aircraft flying uh, hmm. at any time, and we need only you a third of those. You have those deals in place? A, uh, uh, we, we have a, um, a potential partner that uh, we are very close to signing a deal with who uh, leases aircraft, owns most of the aircraft. Hmm. Okay, and that deal should be announced in the not-so-distant future, uh, you're saying, basically? With... Co correct, correct. I, I can't uh, talk about that yet, right. but we're very okay. close to making that work. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, um, I guess the one question that kind of pops into your head when you talk about something like this is, is safety to the extent of would a network like this, and again, I don't know anything about it, be susceptible to hacking? And if so, what are you doing to counteract that? Well, our, our first generation is actually done on a non-interfering basis. So um, it is independent of the flight control systems. We do tap into the aircraft on a, a we call it optically coupled. It's basically done in such a way that we cannot, or anything in our system cannot interfere with the aircraft. So uh, other than that, the, the, the people, our carriers, the people that are customers, would provide the protection against hacking. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, you know what? It's interesting. Let's put it that way. It's going to take a while until we see how viable it is, obviously, business-wise. But we wish you the best of luck, and thank you very much for coming on with us. Um, interesting stuff.